Hey everyone, this is take two, take two of our uh, doula dialogues. I don't know, we're having so much technology issues and uh, I'm just waiting for Heather to, to try again. Um, we, we practice this week too because uh, what I always say, if it doesn't work, you know, make sure you practice and then come back and hopefully it does work uh, the next time. Today on the doula dialogues, um, we're talking about pregnancy and finding your pregnancy uh it's so important and heather and i were talk talking hey here i am it worked it worked i'm so happy <laughs> i'm so happy so we both just for anyone else wanting to do this we both closed our facebook apps and opened them up again right is that what you did heather yes yes yeah. i did i think that's what i have to remember going forward. Oh, I'm so happy. So for those Yay. just joining us and uh, going to see this uh, later on today, I'm Sylvia Akbas. Uh, you might not know me or you might know me quite well. Uh, and I am the owner and founder of Rock the Cradle, which is a, a lovely doula agency here in Montreal. And um, we have a team of amazing doulas. And I thought these types of Facebook live sessions would allow us to allow you to get to know uh, the different members of our team. The plan for these uh, events too are to invite other people as well and really start conversations about uh, pregnancy, birth and postpartum. So today, welcome Heather. Heather Thank you. Yeah, this is fun. And this is actually my very first Facebook Live ever that's not um, like filming my son jumping on a trampoline at Soaked or something like that <laughs> I uh, uh, it's fun I can only eyes because my little uh, window is covering your right eye but that's okay uh, here I'll move it over I moved over oh is there that you go yeah that's, that's, that works that's better things yeah there we go yeah I had talked to Heather uh months ago months ago and saying in her marketing strategy for her business that you know doing facebook lives is uh is getting popular and she's like oh no sylvia i really don't like video i should keep doing video and uh and she so i'm glad you're here i'm glad you're here heather has joined the team uh, this yeah past, uh, this past summer maybe uh heather tell us a quick uh how long have you been a doula Okay, uh, I've been a doula for a few years now, but really only full time for the last um, year and a half, I guess. Oh, hey, Jenny. Jenny's being telling us um, we're beautiful and hilarious. That's us, right? We're so we're so funny. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, and I've known Sylvia for several years. Um, I attended one of her births as a backup years ago, and. Um, mm. It's kind of been in the like a goal in the back of my mind to work with her. So um, it's uh, yeah, it's all working out now. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we have a great team, not just Sylvia, but Jenny, who's watching right now, and um, Ida and Mika, and um, yeah, I'm so I'm so uh, honored to be part of it. Wonderful, wonderful. So let's dive right in. Um, when we were looking right. at subjects to talk about, uh, Heather brought up about this great subject because when dealing with our clients we know that a lot of them don't enjoy being pregnant and finding that mojo is uh, a great way a great way to start Heather um, what does that mean mojo I know woman of words what does what that mean to you well I I'll admit I did have to think about it a little bit um, it's kind of one of those things that you just I don't know we just know what it is we know if we have it we know when we don't but I guess um we could describe it as confidence um mm -hmm. although you can still have confidence and feel like like crap um yeah. it's a uh, zest um your personal power magic um yeah I don't know is there anything that you would want I think to add so. what is it no confidence yeah, yeah. you mentioned you mentioned it and a Charisma. lot of times people don't have that people don't feel good in pregnancy i work with a lot of women they don't they don't feel really good in pregnancy i think you know the symptoms we mostly hear about are a nausea in that first trimester or throughout the entire pregnancy uh feeling tired um 
heart, you know, heartburn, reflux, um, lots of lots of symptoms. Smelling, you can't, uh, you can't, uh, you can't. Uh, how do you say that? Like certain smells, you can't tolerate. Uh, fish, right. meat. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband, it was scotch. I couldn't tolerate uh, when he would pour himself a glass of scotch. I really could. I could. I could smell it a mile away. Oh, just made me not <laughs> not feel well, very well. Yeah. How did you, uh, did, did, how did you feel in pregnancy? Like, did you like it? Did, uh, what was your uh, take on that? I, I loved being pregnant, uh, both times. Um, I was lucky not to have had a uh, nausea. I mean, I think I had a, a little bit, you know, certain, certain smells would turn me off a little bit, but in general, I felt well, I was just very tired the first trimester, both times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it Great. The set, the first, especially the second, um, I felt well physically, but I had had a miscarriage uh, just a couple months before conceiving my son. And so I was, I was nervous. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the first, probably even the first six months, um, mostly the first trimester, but a little bit into the second, um, I didn't buy any maternity clothes. I mean, I still had from some from the first pregnancy as well. Um, I didn't, um, I don't know. I didn't talk a lot about it, I guess. But then after month six, I, I was like, okay, I guess. Yeah. I mean, things are going well and um, I feel great. So hooray. And wow, I'm having another baby. So um, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that. I would love to be pregnant again, but not, you know, have to raise the kid after <laughs> he or she comes out. It's not going to happen at this point. I'm, I'm 45. Not that you can't get pregnant when you're 45, but we're done. But uh, I, yeah, it was fun. It was that's I felt great, that's beautiful so nice. and, and voluptuous, and yeah, it was good. Yeah, I you? loved, I loved, loved, loved my pregnancies, and um, and uh, I didn't know what doulas were back then either. So you know, uh, ended up having doulas in the end, which uh, maybe helped with their suggestions. Uh, but I had, I didn't have the sickness either. Uh, but let's talk about for all those who do, uh, because uh, yeah, they, are, they, they suffer. People, yeah. yeah, they suffer. Our clients, mm -hmm. you know, some of them are bedridden for, for months, which is so unfortunate because, you know, that pregnancy glow, everyone's hoping to have that glow, uh, that famous glow. And some for some people, they just never get it. They never get it. So the what we wanted to there, there are some things I think suggestions that we're going to give today uh, that that evolve around um, some body work, some physical things and emotional things to do that can help um, help you get through uh, pregnancy when you're not feeling mm. that you've you've found your mojo. Uh, so Heather, maybe talk to us a bit about uh, body work. You had mentioned that you tried mm -hmm. some things and that you know as doulas we suggest a lot of body work during pregnancy. Yeah, I'm a big fan of it. Um, before I go into that a little bit, I do want to say, you know, it's a, if you are feeling, you know, just completely like you've passed the first trimester, you're completely nauseated, um, you're so tired, you can barely get out of bed. It's definitely a good idea to check with your medical caregiver to see um, mm -hmm. to see what's going on. Sometimes things like anemia are quite common, and maybe you need more iron, and that could fix it or whatever. Um, but beyond that, yeah, I like to suggest to clients um, who are having various issues to see an osteopath or um, maybe go get acupressure, acupuncture, um, or see a chiropractor, yeah. um, seeking out practitioners who are experienced in working with pregnant women, for sure. But, um, you know, they're all about treating specific ailments, but in a more holistic way, because it's all about, I, I mean, their philosophy generally is that everything, everything's connected. Um, so, you know, you could walk out of there just feeling more, more balanced, as well as possibly less nauseated, um, with less sciatica, things like that. Yeah, that's, um, so that yeah, I agree. Totally go -to. agree. Yeah. One of my clients was told she had sciatica and she went into her, her doctor's office and she still had maybe four months left to go in her pregnancy. And her doctor just said, sorry, that's just a pregnancy ailment. And you just have to wait until the baby comes. And we talked about it. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You, you, you need to address the situation. You've got still three to four months left in your pregnancy. She went for a session or two of uh, acupuncture and it was gone, just gone. And what a difference that made yeah. in the rest of her, her pregnancy. 
Hi, Sarah. So nice to see you online. I hope the babies are well. Uh, yeah, body work. Body work so important um, for lots of different <clears throat> things. I and mean, we don't think about treating nausea perhaps with acupuncture, but uh, the acupuncturists mm -hmm. I talk to, they have some great results. You know, we tend to think of them maybe uh, yeah. for other for other things. Um, but uh, and same with the uh, osteopath for you know our alignment, especially when we're pregnant, we're and we get bigger. Um, I mean, I had gained at least, you know, about, well, about 30 pounds of pregnancy. And, you know, you just walk differently. You feel, you know, you're just, you're, you're balanced. Your weight is distributed differently every time. So I was a big fan of massage every week in the last trimester, I think. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it just, it just feels good. <laughs> it's so, so, yeah, it's so nourishing and calming. And, yeah, and it calms the mind. Nervous. Yeah, it relates with yeah. the in the yeah, mind and how you're important. feeling. Though we don't tend to take the time or often want to spend uh, the money on that, but it really, really is uh, important. Uh, what about, um, yeah. what we, like, what do you suggest your clients physically? What should they be doing, you know, to pep them up a little bit? Uh, exercise, for sure. Um, you know, you don't want to start anything that's um, completely brand new. No, uh, if you no. hadn't, been it no tennis. You got pregnant, but, <laughs> yeah, no, don't don't start. You know, going to the climbing gym or whatever, um, unless you've been doing that before. Uh, walking, uh, swimming is amazing. I never did that. I'm not a swimmer. My husband is. He's always like, you should swim, but that's a perfect activity. Uh, for when you're pregnant, um, yoga, prenatal yoga, yes. or if you're used to doing your regular yoga class, that's great. Um, yeah, exercise is always amazing. You get the endorphin boost as well as just yes. the, you know, the other added benefits, you know, can help with some of your physical issues. Um, but sometimes, you know, women are just exhausted. Like maybe they're running around a lot for work. They're stressed yeah. out. Um, you know, I might suggest trying to fit in a power nap, even if it's putting your head down on your desk, um, resting more, making sure you get enough sleep at night. It may yeah. not be the best sleep of your life. You might be getting up to pee every now and again, now and again, but, uh, um, you know, just, just resting like more time with your feet up, however that looks to you. Yeah, and a lot of people, uh, you know, they've never tried yoga before, but that is something like you were saying that you can really uh, start at any time, even 35 weeks pregnant. And what I love about it is it really, um, again, matches uh, the relaxation of the mind with the relaxation of the body. We have a couple of people on our team, uh, Jenny B and Lauren Enright uh, and Mika as well, uh, three people who are yoga teachers. And I know you've even done your yoga training, uh, Heather, and uh, they give classes uh, out and about in Montreal, uh, prenatal as well as postnatal. But the prenatal is just a time where you can re really relax and, and focus on the baby uh, and nothing else, you know, really get that stress, stress out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. The, uh, yeah, and the rest, I hear you. The first trimester, you know, literally I was taking, I mean, I couldn't take naps at work, uh, but on the weekend I would have three naps on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, I'd, yeah. I'd get up, I'd eat, I'd go back to bed and then get up. You know, my husband's like, we just, we just got up. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm making a baby. You're not, I have to go, <laughs> I have to go back to sleep. Right. So tired. But it, for me, the second yeah. trimester, I think was the best where I had so much energy. I tended to travel during the trends of the second. I was lucky enough that I could travel during my pregnancies and, uh, uh, but you know, modified travel, uh, you know, taking more rests, sitting in more cafes and just taking, making sure, listening yeah. to our, listening to the body. Like you were saying. Yeah. Um, I think also, uh, Another thing we were talking about is walking, walking in nature, discovering nature. Yes. That was a big one. I think um, I love my walks by the water and just getting out 
uh, we're, we're in buildings so often when people are working in buildings and don't get out a, a, as much. Even those 10 minute walks in your lunch hour break can really, really make a difference. Oh yeah. Yeah. They make, it makes a difference in terms of how you're moving, you know, when you're sitting all the time as well, uh, sitting at your office, your desk, I say, get up, get up, get out, get out for a little 10 minute, even 10 minutes, even if it's just that stretching your legs. I know eventually you're going to have to pee every hour. So you get, you do get that, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but actually literally going out, uh, going out and getting a bit of exercise, it really works. Uh, the, um, the emotional side, I think, takes a toll. I don't know if you agree uh, in terms of our mojo. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's so, so many emotions can come up when we're pregnant that may not otherwise uh, be at the surface. I mean, you might feel ambivalent about being pregnant. I mean, maybe it was unplanned or... Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, it, it was planned, but you know, the weight of the, like the thought of becoming a parent is really overwhelming yeah. for some people. Yeah. Um, maybe you're just, you just find yourself like, I, I remember watching, this is kind of a cliche, but it's true. It, it was, it was true for me just watching, seeing commercials like Hallmark type commercials or, um, or, even hearing of a, a bad story on the news, I would, I would just choke up. I would cry. I mean, yeah, those things always affected me, but, um, you know, I, I would get really emotional. Actually, I'm still a little bit like ever since I've had kids, but that's a different topic. I uh, no, I, um, agree. I agree. I cry so much more easily now after I had kids than, and not even just about baby related things about so much more. It's just yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. I think that's, uh, that's very yeah, common. It's like, Oh, the humanity. <laughs> if anyone else has felt that, yeah. yeah, give us a good yes in the comments. Uh, if you're more emotional now, it just never goes away, I think. Uh, that uh, in terms of, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, the yoga, I think dealing with the, the emotions, um, looking mm -hmm. inward perhaps, and uh, not everyone's into meditation, uh, but I think being introspective, and, and just taking mm -hmm. taking a few, even just taking 10 minutes with your cup of coffee and looking out at, you know, or sitting outside or just taking that time for you uh, can be really, really beneficial, yeah. can really be beneficial. And um, we also, um, you know, treating yourself. We were talking about you and I took massages, but uh, sometimes we don't treat mm -hmm. ourselves to things that make us feel good because we have to put money towards the baby or the, you know, the, the house. Or... Right. Yeah. So we forego doing our hair or getting another pair of, you know, we don't want too many maternity clothes, but you know, you, you kind of want to tough it out until the end. <laughs> yeah. Anything. What did you treat yeah, yourself I mean, to when can... you were pregnant? Uh, I, I got my hair done. I would get manicures, pedicures, mostly when I lived in oh. Uruguay, when I was pregnant with my son, because it was much cheaper there. You could go get your hair blown out for about um, $5. Oh, my God. Um, oh, I, nice. Of, yeah. Yeah, I did a lot of that. Um, the body work, for sure. Um, also, I just made it a rule not to deprive myself too much. You know, there's so many lists of, you know, when you get pregnant, everyone starts saying, and there are lists of so, so many don'ts, like, um, and, and there are different schools of thought on them. It's good to check with your, your caregiver, but things like coffee, um, you know, some people say absolutely no caffeine yeah. at all. Yeah. Others will say, you know, a couple cups a day is fine. And I just, uh, I love coffee as most people who know me know and um i just you know i did i gave it up i remember the first trimester of my first pregnancy because it just did okay. not sound good to me it, yeah it was yeah. a weird smell to me at that time and then it was okay after month three um but with my yeah i always had one cup a day and i really enjoyed it i made sure that i bought the best beans out there um i, I really loved the Tool of making the cup using the little Bialetti stovetop maker. And I really savored that. Um, I definitely did not yeah. deprive myself of that. Um, so for me, that, that was important. Um, yeah. And I was comfortable with that. And it did me a world of good, really. Yeah. 
No, I think, and we have to, we have to. Nine months can feel, uh, you know, can feel long, especially if we're not feeling very well and uh, if we're not taking care of ourselves. Um, I think a lot mm -hmm. of people do take care of themselves during pregnancy. That That's a, that's a given. Yeah. But I think what we... Almost eat... said at any other time, I think. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. I found myself, uh, perhaps I ate better with my first pregnancy then with my second and third, though, I, I felt I cheated more yeah, same. Not cheating. I don't want to call it cheating, but I was less careful. I was really careful with my first and then oh, I, let, I let myself go sometime <laughs> with my uh, yeah. subsequent yeah. pregnancies. But um, but yeah, and self-care. We, we talk about that, I think, as doulas, Heather, with our clients and in our prenatal classes. We talk about self-care a lot because it's not something that I find will be given to you unless you request it, you know, the yeah. that goes for being at work and maybe modifying your hours. Uh, no one's going to know you're not feeling well if you don't tell them. And I think uh, more yeah. and more, we have to be very upfront about how we're feeling the time we need off. Uh, even with our spouses, we may, you know, look okay, but I mean, I'm for sure, I think we tell our spouses how we're not feeling, but we'll sometimes plow through, uh, and, you know, and just to, to stay the same, but we're not the same in pregnancy. That's the thing. We're changing. We're growing, yeah. growing a human, growing a baby. Yeah. Our bodies are working really hard, even when we're feeling great during pregnancy. You know, we're just, uh, yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot going on. Yeah, and I think there needs to be a real shift in terms of workplace. Uh, I mean, you and I work for ourselves now, and uh, a lot of people do. But all, like, so the majority of people work in, in offices, and the culture does not necessarily uh, respect, uh, you know, women who are carrying babies uh, necessarily. There's, like, you know, more and more we're hearing about it, but I think there's still a whole, a whole way to go. I don't yeah, know. you coming from the states, I think uh, your maternity, you know, even just maternity leaves are, are shorter than than they are. Oh here. yeah, 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 definitely. With my my first, I had three months of maternity leave, which is, you know, when you tell somebody that in the U.S., it's changing a little bit now, depending on the company. Yeah, but if you tell someone that in the U.S., they're like, wow, you got three months? That's awesome. Yeah, um, and I so that I get the full three months after my baby was born I worked up until my due date and even after I, I went right. I post dates and so I was working from home after that and I sometimes ask myself could that be a one of the reasons maybe my baby came like it came Early. really late like maybe I wasn't ready I didn't take the time really mm -hmm. to um I guess to I didn't I don't think I took enough downtime I don't think I reflected enough on, okay, wow, this major life change is about to happen. Yeah. Um, well, you know, who knows? That... It's 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had, remember, we, we uh, had our open house this weekend. One of the couples was asking, how many weeks should I take off before giving birth? Oh, yeah. And I thought that was such a great question because already they were thinking about uh, what they're going, uh, what they're going to need um, Hi, Fabienne. Hi, Pam. Nice to see you both here. Um, yeah, so how many weeks, you know, I mean, there's no right or wrong answer. I think it just depends on everybody's situation. Right. But if we can take a few weeks just for ourselves before the baby comes. Yeah. It really, And it's not to, you know, do more laundry and do housework and whatever. It's to, to connect, to connect with ourselves, to connect, um, perhaps with friends, with uh, family, and just mm -hmm. really, really start thinking about, uh, uh, you know, contemplating your birth and, and afterwards. Uh, but yeah, yeah. self-care is super important. Well, I don't know if you had anything else, um, Heather, that you wanted to add about mojo. I love that word. Yeah, I do too. Um... Uh, here's something a little bit random, I guess, but um, <clears throat> I do mention it to my clients now and again who are talking about um, having a friend of theirs plan a baby shower. I mean, baby showers oh. are great. They're a lot of fun. Um, you know, you get fun stuff for the baby, you talk a lot about the baby, you play games sometimes if that's uh, your style. But um, I often mention uh, something called a mother blessing, yes. which comes yes. from... Nav I think it's a Navajo 
tradition of called blessing way. Yes. Um, we call it a mother blessing or parent blessing. And it's, um, you can do that in addition to a baby shower or in place of it, basically you have someone kind of organize it for you, rally all your, your friends, usually yeah. female friends. And it's all about the mother, about um, nice, becoming nice. a mother and, and making the transition. I'm a big fan of those. Um, we, we do those, I think, is it, is it Jenny who, um, yes, we do facilitate create or plans them. I think we just we beautiful. Do. Yeah, it is. So it's what a, what a lovely thing, right? I mean, how spending mm -hmm. a couple of hours with your most, you know, important, the most important women in your lives who are there to impart wisdom, uh, to impart truth and to honor you. Yeah. Um, because after that, we all know it's all about the baby, right? I mean, after, after you have your baby, it's all about the baby. It's not about you anymore. We're we trying to change that a little bit. Uh, we're trying, uh, we're trying to, I know. But in culture, yeah, generally, it's yeah. all about the baby. Like, good luck. Here's a onesie and, uh, have yeah. fun That's with that it. lack of so, sleep. And No, so we want to bring back, bring that back about, uh, bring, you know, mother centered, keep it mother centered before yeah. and after the birth and really honoring what our bodies uh, are able to do. So that's great. Right. Yeah. So for all those who are not feeling well, a little bit of physical, a little lots of rest, eating well, uh, some emotional work there to do through maybe some yoga, meditation, uh, getting a doula. We didn't even mention getting a doula. Oh, yeah. Get a doula, holidays. everyone. So yeah. I think that's a good one. If you're not feeling well, we do help you. We do lots of resources uh, to provide you. Uh, like that like, like client I was mentioning about the acupuncture and, you know, healing her mm -hmm. sciatica in two or two, one or two sessions rather than waiting three or four months, you know, had she perhaps not had a doula, right. she might have just suffered through that. Um, so yes, and really taking lots True. of self care people, everybody, even if you're not pregnant, let's uh, spread that word. Uh, well, thanks, Heather. This was a lot of fun. I'm so happy it um, you got on board in the end. <laughs> Yeah, me too. It was so, so much fun. Thanks, Sylvia. Thanks, everybody. And thanks, for joining everyone. Us. Uh... We are doing these every Friday at noon and having different personalities on uh, different doulas and other people. And hope you can join us. And if you can't join us live, you can always know that there's a recording afterwards. Uh, if you're interested in mother blessings or prenatal classes or doula work, you know, just reach out. We'd be happy to help. And I look forward to seeing everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye. Yep. Bye, everyone. Bye, Heather. Thanks. <laughs> Bye, Sylvia. Thanks.